Hey guys, welcome to the CBZ Rack Show. My name is Robbie Durant, and this is the hottest schoolboy rugby show that's coming out of Zimbabwe right now, brought to you by CBZ Bank. A reminder to make sure that you subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, like and share on Facebook, and we want your comments as well, also on Facebook. I am joined here by Ruvi. Ruvi? Oh, morning. yes. Well, great to be here. And, uh, of course, uh, looking at a lot that we're going to be dealing with today. In particular, uh, starting off with junior schools rugby, you were there at St. John's Prep where uh, you saw some really good uh, rugby sp schools coming together and Absolutely. playing some good rugby. But we're also going to be having an interview with a man who is uh, very well known within the rugby circles, uh, Liam Middleton. And that one is a That's segment I'm looking forward to. A man who's got a rugby brain that I believe as a Zimbabwe, we are really not picking as much as we should. But also at the same time, we're also going to have a general overview. We had the Craven Week trials yeah. uh, happen over the weekend. So we do have the under 14, the under 17, under 18 sides. We're going to be quickly taking a look at those as well. But we've also got a sports psychologist who's going to be coming through for the Nutriactive uh, a special moment of the week and, and getting to hear from Dr. Michael Passaportis on some of the things that uh, he's going to be talking about. I think sports psychology is uh, so so Absolutely. key and important and then the upcoming fixtures believe me i'm rubbing my hands on this one because <laughs> this week is going to be really good uh there's a particular coach who i know is going to be smiling for the rest of the season he beat st john's college on home turf and he's uh, smiling forever i mean we couldn't even make him frown. We tried to pinch him. We tried to stone him. We tried everything. <laughs> but he's just smiling all the way. But uh, that's what we have for you today on the CBZ uh, Ruck Show. Well, don't forget our presenter's choice as well. That's uh, where we can say what we want uh, here on the CBZ Ruck Show. But let's just quickly talk about the St. John's uh, Prep Super 8. It was a fantastic event. Um, I, I managed to be there. Uh, we were obviously streaming it as well. And the, the talent that's coming out of our junior ranks was so fantastic. What was nice to see, Ruby, was a lot of the teams from out of uh, uh, Bulawayo. We had a team from Bulawayo. We had Lefordia, um, who had eight injuries, who came through and did so well. So it's uh, incredible stuff. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, you usually see the, the big schools such as St. John's Prep, Hartman House, and also Eaglesville has really been there and thereabouts uh, for, for quite a long time right now. In actual fact, they are providing uh, quite a number of the high school stars that we begin to see uh, at the end of the day. But I think uh, the most important thing for those that would be saying, okay, uh, they played some good rugby, let's get to see it. So check out the highlights. Lovely scrum there by Hartman House. 9 to 10. Draws and passes. Lovely. Through the gap. Trans on the ball. Excellent work by the big number 8. Taking play up to over the halfway. You've got a tackle. Lovely tackle there by the number 7. He shrugs off. Oh, reminds me of mine and Nanu. Come on, Lafordi. A tackle, boys, man. And standing still, this man's dangerous. I don't think you're going to stop him there. He's huge. All right, welcome back. Next up, we've got uh, St. John's versus Whitestone. The boys from Bulawayo. Driving up to Harare yesterday. St. John's starting the tournament well. Winning their first game against Eaglesvale. Whitestone started their tournament off well as well. They drew with Hellenic, so this one is a big one for them. St. John's making the early advancement there. Young Guata with the ball stepping inside. Looks like he's going to get the five-pointer here. Dots it down under the poles. It's a good start from St. John's. They score five points with a kick to... Well, incredible highlights there of the St. John's Prep Super 8. There is talk of them making it to a Super 10, potentially, as well as looking at maybe a South African school. Mm, well, that, that would add a whole lot of sauce uh, to this. I think some international competition always adds uh, a little bit of bite to a competition and also brings development uh, to our side so that we see what's happening across the Limpopo. Eh? Absolutely. Well, coming up after this, an absolutely incredible legend here in Zimbabwe. He's been across the world. Uh, we've got Liam Middleton coming up after the break.
Every achievement, every record broken, every standing ovation, every proud moment is a product of an empowering relationship. At CBZ, we believe in the strength of partnerships and growing together. Together, we have collaborated in building roads, offices, homes, and bridges. We have partnered in the fields, have gone down shafts and blasted quarries, all while protecting assets, managing investments, safeguarding wealth, and helping you transact. We have supported big and small businesses and the ones in between with a helping hand or sound advice. As we celebrate what has been, we look ahead towards what can be. And while we can count how long we have been around, our achievements will always be quantified by your success. CBZ, partners for success. So welcome back to the CBZ Rock Show. And in this particular moment, I'm going to be talking to somebody who is a highly qualified coach, a highly technical coach, a man who is a Zimbabwe a rugby legend, especially when we, when we talk about coaching circles. He's not only coached here in Zimbabwe, but he's coached pretty much all around the world. Uh, well, help me welcome Liam Middleton. Uh, Liam, uh, thank you so much for joining us on the CBZ Rug Show. Thanks, Ruby. Great to be here. Um, always fantastic to talk about rugby. That's my, my subject. So thanks for welcoming me. All right. Uh, so, Liam, for those that may uh, not really know you, I, I know we've got a new audience that is building up week after week. Um, first and foremost, where did your love for rugby actually start? And um, when did you then decide, look, I'm actually going to go into coaching, uh, maybe to put that in a summarized form. So I think my love of rugby started as, as a young boy. Uh, my father used to wake me up at between 4.30 and 5 o'clock every Saturday morning to watch uh, rugby in New Zealand. So we used to get provincial rugby being shown on TV here. Mm -hmm. Uh, not in the days of, uh, of floodlit rugby that you get now out of New Zealand where you can watch at a reasonable hour. So I pretty much did that for four or five years, mm -hmm. early mornings, and, and I started to love the game. I started to understand it and see how it moved and how it flowed and, and got a bit of an understanding as a young, young guy. I only started playing rugby in, when I went to high school. Mm -hmm. um, and at, at Watershed, I was inspired by a, a very good coach, Mr. Dongo. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, I actually traveled overseas uh, and went to play overseas and do some studying. And from a, a major knee injury, drifted into coaching uh, reasonably quickly. And uh, I was fortunate just to find find my love of the game um, through through coaching, uh, and also you know found that I was something I could do quite well. You know, you find sometimes there's some gifts that you didn't know about, and um, so I was fortunate to find something that that I was good at. All right, Liam, uh, you also went through the Zimbabwe uh, rugby structures, also went up to national team level, uh, but then also a big break came for you as well uh, to go and uh, literally establish uh, the Canadian rugby system. And, and one of the players who actually says that they owe it to you is the current Canada uh, Rugby Sevens captain. Uh, what was that experience like, especially going to Canada and really beginning to put the structures in place? So it was a, a developing nation. I'd obviously spent prior to that 17 years in Europe uh, learning my trade uh, and, and coaching is a, is a craft, it's a skill. And, and I often remind coaches of that, that this is something that you, like a player, you've got to work at every day. And so I was fortunate to spend that time in Europe in an intensive program of both coach education and coaching experience. Uh, and it set me up nicely to, to move over to Canada and, and try and impact on their program. Um, very passionate about sport, uh, very resilient players. Um, I found them to be physically well developed. So they start their S&C and athletic development quite young. Um, so they were really well physically developed, but in terms of their rugby intellect, certainly behind the rest of the nations that we, that we worked on. So probably two areas I tried to impact most on was creating a professional environment. So creating that environment that gave players the best opportunity to excel and then really try to accelerate their learning and their rugby intellect 
of the Sevens game. So it was a great experience uh, to travel the world and uh, to experience a different culture. It's a very, very different way of seeing sport and seeing rugby. Well, yeah, most definitely. Well, uh, I, I think now to continuously pick on, on, on your view uh, of rugby, I know you also uh, contribute quite significantly where you're working now at uh, Hellenic School, but uh, I would like for you to maybe just give us your overall view in terms of uh, the trends in schoolboy rugby. I think um, a lot of discussion is coming around uh, the quality. Has it gone down? Are our coaches are doing the right thing? Are we seeing players actually executing their positions uh, properly? In your general view right now, where do you think we are as a Zimbabwe? I think Zimbabwean schoolboy rugby has got a very definitive style and I think it has done for at least the last 20 years. Um, if you watch a Zimbabwean schoolboy team, they generally play a, a quite a uniform style. So we, we draw on a lot of athleticism. Uh, we do have very athletic players here. Uh, we bless with a lot of pace. Um, there's a flair in the way that we play that game, quite loose. Um, Definitely our skill levels are not where our, our counterparts are in different parts of the world. So I think the two areas that we probably lack is uh, core skill execution. And then again, just rugby intellect outside of the style that we've played for 20 years. I do want to say, though, that in, in line with that, I have seen a shift from Peter House to a slightly different style. And I would call it... Uh, a slightly more mature style. So we're going away from the Zimbabwean schoolboy rugby style to a slightly more intellectual, strategic, uh, mature style of play. I do believe that for our schoolboy sides to excel, not just our schoolboy national teams, but our schoolboy individuals who've got a different level of talent who can go outside of the country and excel on an international or uh, professional level. They do need at this point to be exposed to a different style of rugby because when they take that step up to Hartbury College or uh, Varsity Cup in South Africa, they are exposed to a different level or a different style of rugby. I'm, I don't want to say a different level, a different style of rugby. Um, so I've been interesting this, particularly this year and a bit of last year, seeing that shift from Peter House in particular. Mm -hmm. Different strategy there. And I think it's good for us. All right. Well, I think that's uh, quite important. Um, in particular, there have been questions. I think um, my first experience on this uh, whilst doing rugby commentary was around about 2018. I think you may remember the Prince Edward Peter House game, high scoring game, lots of flair in that one. Um, and lots of good players as well that came out of those two particular sides. And there was a statement that was then said later that the scoreline looked great and the play may have entertained everybody, but it may have been a reflection of poor defense. And do you also think that in terms of our defense, uh, that might also be another issue, defensive patterns, uh, quickly resetting ourselves, uh, especially when a breakdown occurs as well? Yeah, uh, that style I talk about in Zimbabwe schools rugby has a uh, predominant focus on attacking play. And I think if you went to, uh, I would guess, if you went to most uh, schoolboy practices in Zimbabwe this week, if you looked at the split of time spent on attack and time spent on defense, you'd find uh, a, a, a tilting towards attacking play. We're very attack focused. Um, I think that can affect us when we take that step up to Craven Week, when we need to defend a lot more than we might here. Uh, so that trend is, is very definitely there. I often ask coaches in the schoolboy system, how does your team play? You know, and that's really important to know that what's the DNA of your team? How does it play? And quite often that answer is, I'm playing 1-3-3-1, three, three, mm -hmm. which is immediately an attack-dominated mindset. So the answer is, how does your team play? We attack, and we attack like this. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd like to maybe see a shift in that in describing a more rounded style of play. All right, so whilst we're actually talking about those kinds of formations where 
would you say, is it possible now to be able to change some of those formations, uh, much like we would know from a football style, uh, that you can go 4-3-3 and then when things are a little bit difficult, you can go 5-3-2 or you can go 3-5-2 and things like that. So help us maybe understand a little bit more, especially for coaches that are watching right now. And that may say, well, 1-3-3-1 one, three, three, one is the one that I grew up you know, and I've been, uh, what can I say, educated into. Yeah. So is there a different style that they can actually implement? Yeah, look, 1331 is, is definitely the most commonly used style. I would say it's, it's more a case of if you don't use it, you're the anomaly, the outlier. Um, and it's, it's a good style. It's, it's your sort of basic style of spreading your forwards across the field. Uh, you, you get an opportunity to create, create mismatches. You, you make sure that you can keep your ball because you've got forwards in all parts of the field. But there are different styles and there are or different systems, but they also... There will be teams in Zimbabwe schools rugby who are very capable, not really running a style at all. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. You know, there are a lot of sides around the world uh, in, in different cultures of this world who won't have a specific structure to play to. That can be very beneficial because now you're teaching kids a lot about instinct. It's not, I'm in this pod, so I go to that ruck. It's more a case of, am I needed at that ruck? Mm -hmm. Can I run an offload support line or uh, an attacking line out the back? Or is my, my primary requirement to get that to that ruck and win it? Mm -hmm. That will be uh, quite a big focus in the, in the European system, particularly the French system uh, of, of player development and the New Zealand system where they're saying, we don't run pods. We don't run one three three one or, mm -hmm. or any of the other styles. We're saying read the game first, mm -hmm. and then when you're a little bit more advanced, now we start to structure it, and we structure one three three one or other mm -hmm. systems to break defenses, mm -hmm. because defenses become so organised. You need a system to break that down. Um, so some mm -hmm. things for our our, uh, our coaches to think about that sometimes a system much lower down is inhibiting for the development of players. And maybe a more natural style is the way to go. Wow. I think we're just learning so much about rugby. I thought I knew much, but anyway, I'm still on rugby ready, so I'm not yet, <laughs> I'm not yet up there. But uh, let's also now begin to look at um, uh, maybe coach specialization. Okay, so um, is there a merit, particularly in our current setup at schoolboy rugby level? Uh, do you need a kicking coach, a scrum coach, a um, backline coach, a defensive coach, and, and all these other technicalities that we see happening at the highest levels of rugby. I think that, in my opinion, every coach should be a specialist. Mm -hmm. So even if you are able to coach attack, defense, scrum, and line out, mm -hmm. so a broad, broad mm -hmm. perspective, you should still... Uh, be working towards being a specialist coach. So uh, you may say I'm an attack coach, but I have a speciality in line outs. Uh, and that's your, your stronger focus point. So I do believe that a jack of all trades has a, has a place in the game, but all coaches should be trying to direct themselves to having one part of the game that they are much better at coaching than another. Um, also the ability where there's a downfall to specialism is that it can pigeonhole you slightly. Mm -hmm. So look at, let's look at Wayne Smith. So he's just, mm -hmm. I mean, he's probably the, the, the strongest intellectual coach of, of modern times, Wayne mm -hmm. Smith, definitely. And the All Blacks have brought him back into the fold as sort of a, a mentor type coach. Mm -hmm. His ability at the highest level to one season coach attack mm -hmm. and then the next season coach defense mm -hmm. shows that is there a requirement for specialism? Um, that question would be there. But he might say, my specialism is in coaching attack, but I'll also coach defense because there's some crossover. Do we use specialist coaches in schoolboy rugby? I think there's some value in it, but there's not a lot around for us to, to draw on. All right. Well, um, as we're coming to the end of this one and just rounding this one up, uh, do you feel as well on the on the in this landscape that we are producing world-class players um i think we've seen matthew Uhuru now is playing for canada uh pretty much a product of of a zimbabwean schoolboy rugby 
I think we've got a number as well that are playing within the UK. I think Lovejoy Chawatama is also mm. playing there. He's been doing really well. Uh, and then, of course, Tendai Bistum Taurara and the list, uh, list does continue. Uh, how best do you think we can harness some of this uh, as well? And maybe just your, your thoughts if we are actually producing world-class rugby players. Yeah, I mean, the, the world, the Zimbabwe World 15 is, is a world beater, isn't it? Could win a World Cup. So we know that we've got excellent talent going out from our country. I think that uh, the, the development program we have in our schools is a good one. It's a very competitive schools program. Kids are invested in it. They want to prepare for it. I think there's parts of our development program at a lower level that will give more of our players an opportunity to excel professionally. So there's some, some interventions that we need to make from probably 15 or 16 years old onwards up to 18 to give more of that talent an opportunity. Because I know we say it often, we are rich in talent. We're probably not so rich in development. Very focused on a schoolboy match on Saturday, winning that, feeling good about it, and then the next week comes. So it's maybe zooming out a little bit and seeing what do we need to do to develop players better because we are rich in talent. Well, definitely rich and talented. There's no doubt about that. But it leads me to say thank you so much, Liam. I think we sure. could go for hours and hours just uh, picking on your on your head and on your mind. And I'm sure this will not be the last time that you'll be coming through to the CBZ Drug Show. But thank you so much for joining us. Great. Thanks for having me. All right. So that was Liam Middleton uh, just uh, giving us more insight and uh, technicalities, uh, particularly around our rugby Zimbabwe schoolboy rugby, which is why we are here, CBZ Rug Show, to make sure that each and every one of us get an appreciation of what's happening locally. Well, we will be going into our next segment where we're going to be looking at the Craven Week sides, and we've got some ideas around that. Stay tuned. CBZ Bank brings you more convenience and more smiles. Introducing CBZ Permit. Now you can send and receive Forex anywhere in Zimbabwe without a bank account. No hassles, no stress. CBZ Remit is safe, secure, fast and reliable. Who can use CBZ Remit? Anyone. CBZ Remit is perfect for both CBZ account holders and non-account holders. To send or collect cash, all you need is your national ID or valid passport. US dollars or rands accepted. Receive your cash at any CBZ branch near you. 40 branches available nationwide for your convenience. CBZ Remit is very affordable. Charges only 2% of the money sent. Send and receive your Forex anywhere in Zimbabwe with CBZ Remit today. CBZ Bank, partners for success. Welcome back to the CBZ Rug Show. That was a lesson in rugby. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, we learned so much uh, from Liam. And as I did mention before, that we're going to be picking on his brain. He's got uh, such a vast knowledge of the oh. game. And, and we just saw that. I think at the end of the day, uh, these are some of the things that coaches need uh, to begin to watch. So make sure you tune in every single week because we've got something uh, for coaches, for players, and everybody who's a rugby fan. Well, you can catch us on uh, the Cairo Sports social media platforms, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. Okay, so the Zimbabwe teams have been selected, the uh, junior teams. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the under-18s for now, um, Ruby. Uh -huh. uh, it's also nice to see a couple of the uh, schools that aren't the top schools uh -huh. have, have got a couple of guys in there as well. Oh, yes. Uh, some top schools uh, that have got... Uh, I think there's a little bit of disappointment from other quarters um, and maybe understandably so. I think in the under-18 setup, we only had one uh, uh, a kid coming through from uh, Prince Edward, I believe, uh, making it into the under-18 setup. Wow. And so that shows a dearth in terms of the government schoolboy rugby system and how uh, that needs to really be brought back to life again. And we're thankful uh, for the fact that the CBZ Rugby Development Initiative is doing that. Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit about that within the next segment. But um, yeah, we saw all of pretty much your top 10 rugby playing schools, particularly the private schools, having some youngsters in there. I, I don't think I had too many qualms within the uh, under 18 setup. I did expect some names to be there and I found them to be there. So I think at the end of the day, that squad looks pretty good. But what was a 
good surprise for me. Uh, in the under-17 setup, uh, we saw uh, four youngsters uh, from Prince Edward, one from Churchill. But amongst the four youngsters from Prince Edward, two of them are actually playing in the Prince Edward first team. And wow. making the under-17 wow. uh, Zim Craven weak side already shows you that's amazing. It's the two twins, yeah. the Chitendeni twins, uh, Ethan and Earl. So that was quite amazing for them. Well, Heritage also putting their hands up in that under-17 side as well. I think it's two, two players in the team as well as a non-traveling reserve. Mm -hmm. So that's also good stuff. The under-14s, unpacking the under-14s a bit? Oh, yes. Unpacking the under-14s, what was also brilliant to see is the two primary schools making it through to the under-14 setup. So uh, that's good. Avondale Primary as well as Admiral Tate. Now, these are two sides, or rather two schools, whom we've actually known to be producing some good players. And one of the top players that we have in South Africa at the moment, uh, that is uh, Tino Tenda Blythe Mavesere. Uh, he actually came from Admiral Tate, went okay. through to Churchill and, and so on. So this is good to see that they are still within the mix and they're still uh, providing quite a lot of players. But also one more thing to point out from the under-14 side is to see the number of Matland players. Now, Matland has yeah, also been that. saying that, look, we haven't been included. And, and to be honest, it wasn't as competitive as we used to know them to be. But it looks like they are coming back to the big boys' table. And believe me, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of them players making it well there was talk as well about uh, obviously looking at the development of rugby and you heard Liam Middleton say that about uh, are we doing enough maybe not and uh, this is where the CBZ uh, rugby development initiative has come in with a big stick and, and they had uh, a tournament last week oh yes we are actually going to be focusing a lot more on that tournament but we take a short break before we look into that CBZ Bank brings you more convenience and more smiles. Introducing CBZ Remit. Now you can send and receive Forex anywhere in Zimbabwe without a bank account. No hassles, no stress. CBZ Remit is safe, secure, fast and reliable. Who can use CBZ Remit? Anyone. CBZ Remit is perfect for both CBZ account holders and non-account holders. To send or collect cash, all you need is your national ID or valid passport, US dollars or rands accepted. Receive your cash at any CBZ branch near you. 40 branches available nationwide for your convenience. CBZ Remit is very affordable. Charges only 2% of the money sent. Send and receive your Forex anywhere in Zimbabwe with CBZ Remit today. CBZ Bank, partners for success. Welcome back to the CBZ Rack Show with myself, Robbie Durant, and Ruvi. Uh, we're chatting about now exciting stuff in Zimbabwe, the CBZ Rugby Development Program, which is so needed here in the country. Ruvi, this is absolutely exciting, and we know that something happened last week as well. Oh, yes, uh, quite phenomenal to actually see nine uh, boys' teams, uh, six ladies' teams uh, going out to Ellis Robbins, uh, one of the teams that used to play really good rugby uh, back in the day. Uh, just a quick fact check. Uh, do you know uh, that at Ellis Robbins, a uh, famous gospel singer called Pastor Stanley Guanzura used to play rugby and was a fantastic rugby player back in his day, but he decided to go the music route and wow. not pursue rugby. Wow, wow, but anyway, wow. in any case, uh, just looking at what happened there, uh, we had nine teams uh, from the boys' side, and so they were put into uh, pools. So two pools that they played. Uh, they played the sevens version of rugby. It's easier to administrate and, and to actually go through. And uh, Alan Wilson came out tops. Uh, in their group. Goromonzi also came out tops in their group. But a, a school that I would never have actually put in there, Christ Ministries, came out second within that uh, Goromonzi group uh, to then proceed over to uh, the third and fourth place playoff where they then drew with the Zivarase Kwa High. Wow. So Christ Ministries are doing really well. They are a co-ed school, uh, mind you, as well. So that, that can also, you know, reduce on the numbers. So they had to share the third place playoff there. But the shocker was in the final. Alan Wilson, who we wow. know beat Churchill last year, were beaten by Goromonzi. What a result. What a result, Robbie. Well, this is the joy about the CB's uh, ruck show as well as obviously the CB rugby development 
is those schools would not get that exposure. Oh, and yes. now they're getting this exposure. Gurumonzi beating uh, Ellen Wilson. I mean, that is just incredible stuff with the CBZ development. Oh, yes. I think celebrations will definitely continue throughout the year. Even if Gurumonzi is beaten <laughs> uh, for the rest of the year, we don't. <laughs> I think CBZ, you've just brought joy uh, to Gurumonzi there, especially when it comes to, to sports. So. Uh, well done to them for the girls' aside, which uh, uh, we didn't focus too much on. Uh, that became a form of trials uh, where we're looking at the selection for uh, the the the, the under-18 team that will then also go to the Craven Week. And so uh, we'll look at uh, some of those as well as we continue uh, during the week. But we uh, during the weeks, uh, the forthcoming weeks rather. But CBZ... Thank you so much for the Rugby Development Initiative. Uh, thank you so much for also even sponsoring this show. Uh, the feedback is so amazing. And, and they're just saying thank you so much, CBZ, for doing such a great work in terms of bringing rugby to light, especially in the uh, lesser communities. Yeah, big shout out to CBZ. It's incredible stuff. Uh, the development of rugby in Zimbabwe is so needed. And this is the right path for uh, our future, future stars coming through to find that diamond in the rough. Uh, we've got... Uh, Mike Passaport is coming up after this. Oh, yes, he is going to be coming after this. But just to let you know, there will be another uh, one of the CBZ Rugby Development Initiatives that will be taking place. And this will be at Prince Edward High School on the 17th of June. So come out, actually watch this rugby. It's happening on Absolutely. Wednesdays. So it will be Wednesday, the 17th of June, uh, where it will be taking place at Prince Edward. So make sure you go out, see some of the rugby development happening at the lower schools. But we take a break. And when we come back, Mike Passaportis with Sports Psychology. What is sports psychology? What is that? That's that's a really great question. Um, and for several reasons, but mainly because there is currently, there's quite a lot of misconception or, or misinformation surrounding, I guess, what sports psychology is. And yeah. then in turn, what a sports psychologist does. Um, one of the big ones, or one of the main ones is that this is really only for athletes who are struggling or perhaps experiencing some form of difficulty in their sport. But that's, that's not just the case. Yes, it's beneficial for people in that scenario, certainly. Um, but it's also beneficial for those who are wanting to take their game to the next level, um, or even for those who are perhaps just looking for a bit more satisfaction in their sporting experiences. Mm. Um, I guess at its very basic level, it's a branch of psychology that focuses on the relationship and interactions between psychological functioning and athletic performance. How vital is, is sports psychology for like youth development? Definitely. And I know I'm likely to be quite biased in my response to being, being a sports <laughs> psychologist. <laughs> You're um, allowed. <laughs> I do think that beyond kind of my own views, if we look, if we try to understand, I guess, mental ability or, or psychological skills, we can really start to see um, it's important. So I'll use um, kind of just as you mentioned, the youth sport kind of setting as an example. So typically, if we if we think of talent development in this area, so how athletes are trained and prepared to become more proficient in their sports, if we, if we break it down really simply. Mm. Whether it be football, cricket, athletics, rugby, whatever your sport. Historically, that development process is viewed as consisting of four separate but equally important pillars. So your athletic ability is bought, built on top of those four pillars. Okay. So the first one will be your physical development. This is where athletes work on the physical abilities they need to perform their sport. Things like your strength, speed, power, fitness, anything that really falls under the S and C kind of banner. Mm. That's pillar one. Pillar two is probably your technical development. So these are your sport specific skills. If we use okay. rugby, it's the things you need to be proficient at rugby. So passing, catching, tackling, mm. and so on. The third pillar is a little bit more 
tricky to kind of nail down, but it's your tactical development. So your understanding of the sport or the game that you're playing. So how to read the game. Um, mm. Again, if we stick with rugby, it's things like knowing where the space is, being able to identify the space, reading defenses, um, picking support lines to run, just those kind of tactics that come through. And then lastly, your fourth pillar is your psychological development. So here we're enhancing things like confidence, motivation, ability to handle pressure um, and to be resilient um, and those sorts of things. Discussing how important sports psychology is uh, to schoolboys as well as to sport. Uh, Ruvia, it's very important. And I think, you know, when you're looking at the opportunities of, of kids and where they get maybe uh, disappointed, they take it hard. And mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, sports psychology is incredibly, incredibly important. Oh, yes, uh, it is so important. Uh, there are a number of things that it does address. Uh, looking at the issue of dealing with pressure. Mm -hmm. Each and every one of these derbies brings pressure. John's George's, uh, Falcon Peter House, uh, Peter House Loma Gandhi, Churchill Prince Edward. It brings massive yeah. psychological pressure uh, on these boys and they need to be prepared for it. And and uh, the psyching up of saying, don't worry, we'll beat them some Sometimes it's just not enough, particularly when the result doesn't go your way. You're also looking at dealing with some of the mental health issues that may be happening in homes personally. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, for these um, uh, young boys, they come from different backgrounds. So a sports psychologist is necessary to try and help them prepare for matches as they are coming uh, towards them. But, uh, I mean, the work goes on and on. And I think we heard that uh, from Michael Passportis. Well, hats off to coaches as well. Um, they, they stand as a coach and as a as a mental guidance, uh, you know, coaches are, are massive and so important to, to schools at, at, at this stage. Yeah. Right, so we are checking out our fixtures coming up. A big weekend of rugby. Yeah. Schoolboy Rugby brought to you by the CBZ Rack Show. You can catch it all on Kyra Sports, on all our social medias, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Mouth-watering stuff this weekend. Oh, yes, mouth-watering stuff. And we start off uh, where I'll be going uh, because I can't start off with the Harare fixtures. Where I'll be going. You love Falcon, eh? you love Falcon. <laughs> I'm going down to Essie Godini. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll be bringing you Falcon versus Peter House uh, live and direct. So make sure that you catch up with that on our social media um, uh, pages, particularly on Facebook and YouTube, which is where we'll be uh, flighting all of uh, these uh, fixtures. So Falcon Peter House is going to be quite huge Peter House right now, two out of two. They are looking pretty good. Um, yep. uh, really can't be stopped. Uh, look like a steam train. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would feel that maybe Loma Gandhi gave them a better run for their money. Yeah. It was a 19-7 win. Um, but also at the same time, coming up against Falcon, uh, they had a good blast against uh, CBZ, but they struggled against Prince Edward. So against Peter House, they might also find it a little bit difficult. Well, Liam Middleton uh, picked out Peter House as saying yeah. they're playing a new brand of rugby, yeah. which is exciting. Exciting to see. I did watch them against Hellenic. Uh, powerful forwards, quick backs, big backs as well. Uh, certainly, certainly a team to watch. Uh, you still owe me money for Prince Ed, uh, for uh, St George's, by the way, against St John's. <laughs> I called it. But uh, no. other games coming up? Oh yes, other games that will be coming up. St George's will be hosting Loma Gandhi. They'll be buoyed Ooh. after that big win against John's College, yes, especially on Honeyfield. Uh, I think that was a devastating blow for, for St. John's uh, College, but a big lift for St. George's. So will they be able to kick on? Uh, Loma Gandhi may be uh, flattered to deceive uh, during the Derby Day Festival, uh, losing out against Peter House, but they did have a big win before. So I think it might just be uh, even Stevens here, yeah. St. George's and uh, Loma Gandhi. Uh, too tough to call. Um, I'll go Loma Gandhi since you are lacking St. George's this season. <laughs> I'm supporting St. George's. Uh, also then checking out St. John's. St. John's got a big game coming up as well. Oh, well, they've got a huge game. <laughs> I, I, I think, it's not going to be easy. Yeah, I, 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 do, I don't think they actually want to play the game. <laughs> they are playing against uh, Prince Edward who are two out of two as well. Uh, just like uh, Peter House. Uh, I would love to see the game between Prince Edward and Peter House. Hopefully that one happens. Uh, but... Um, 
St. John's coming off the back of that defeat, I'm sure uh, they went and re-looked at themselves really deep down. And they'll be looking at how can they do a little bit better. Prince Edward is not an easy proposition. Right. They overcame them just by two points and Prince Edward will be looking to correct and wrong that right. Well, uh, with the presenter's choice, I'm going to be discussing something with you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all bi the big rag rugby coming up this weekend. It's exciting stuff. We have got our presenter's choice coming up after the break. Every achievement, every record broken, every standing ovation, every proud moment is a product of an empowering relationship. At CBZ, we believe in the strength of partnerships and growing together. Together, we have collaborated in building roads, offices, homes, and bridges. We have partnered in the fields, have gone down shafts and blasted quarries, all while protecting assets, managing investments, safeguarding wealth, and helping you transact. We have supported big and small businesses and the ones in between with a helping hand or sound advice. As we celebrate what has been, we look ahead towards what can be. And while we can count how long we have been around, our achievements will always be quantified by your success. CBZ, partners for success. We're back. The hottest schoolboy rugby show in Zimbabwe right now, and it's going world worldwide. You can catch it on Kyra Sport, on all the platforms, social media, and uh, our license now mm -hmm. is exciting. Oh, yes. It's uh, exciting. Oh, yes. Uh, today we're going to be putting some massive pressure, but uh, before we get to the pressure, before we get to the pressure that we're going to apply, uh, we, we mentioned before that we're going to be having a fantastic weekend of, yeah. of rugby. But before we get into that, we have to look at how the current log standings are. It's just two games down mm -hmm. at the present moment and leading is Prince Edward. Yeah. Uh, they've been winning well. They've been uh, winning against the top sides. So it's prepared them for this coming weekend. I don't think they'll be afraid of St. John's College who are currently sitting in second position at the moment. In third, St. George's. In fourth, we've got Loma Gandhi. In fifth, We've got Falcon College in sixth. We've got Peter House. Now, many will be asking, but Peter House has won quite handsomely and, and things like that. The rankings work basically on the strength of the sides that they've been meeting. Mm. Uh, the first match, well, it was against Hellenic. We expected them to do that. Against Loma Gandhi, we kind of expected them to do that. Uh, this week, well, I think that's a different proposition. <laughs> so most probably that should bump them up at uh, the table just a little bit. But let's quickly look at this now. The one match, the one match though, Rob, that you would want to happen this season. Which one is it? And that you're looking so forward to. Well, we've got to be specific as well. This log is the CBZ Rack Show log. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be specific about that. My game of the season, I would definitely say, and I'm putting my head on the block, mm -hmm. St. George's versus Pidas. St. George's versus Pete House. <laughs> I don't think Ricky is even smiling at that one. Uh, I know he's watching, but... Um, I know Dave Kirkman might actually be smiling and saying, I'm in good form right now. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind taking on George's. Keep on giving it to us. The one that I'm pressing for, Dave Kirkman, Sean D'Souza, make something happen. Prince Edward versus Peter House. Come on, even parents, put pressure on the coaches. <laughs> this match has got to take place. Look, both of them are playing some scintillating rugby, yeah. lovely stuff. And I think it would be a travesty, a, an utter disservice to the Zimbabwe schoolboy rugby community if this match doesn't happen. Whether it's out in Marondera or it's going to be happening at Jubilee Field, wherever, even if it happens at Morris Depot or Harare Sports Club, it doesn't matter. Prince Edward versus <laughs> Peter House has got to happen. Well, my question is, why isn't it happening this season? Um, I'm not so sure. Uh, some of the talk behind the scenes was Peter, uh, Peter House uh, put together their uh, fixtures and they are set within their ways. Uh, Prince Edward, apparently, with the conversation with Sean D'Souza said, I want the fixture to happen and that negotiations and discussions are happening in the background to try and squeeze in somewhere. Well, the CBZ Rack Show, uh, let's put a little bit of pressure on these guys. We want that game to happen. Uh, it's got to go to happen. I mean, that's going to yes. be massive. Well, Ruvi, thank you very much. It's been, uh, been a pleasure. Reminder to follow the CBZ Rack Show on Cairo Sport, uh, on your Instagram, Facebook, 
YouTube, please follow us and make sure that you comment and let us know what you're thinking. We're trying to cover as much as we can. And a big shout as well to the CBZ Rugby Development Program. Exciting stuff. From us, we'll catch you next week. Cheers.